If you want your professional athletes to perform at a professional level, then they need the adequate sustenance to perform at that level. You know what I mean? They can't be lacking the eggs and the meat. She had to quit because the IOC put a male in the boxing ring with her. And she didn't want to quit, but reality quite literally hit her in the face. 2024, yeah, I can say that. 2024 would definitely be my last Olympics because a girl had things to do, man. <laughs> While everyone was criticizing the blasphemous opening ceremony, the Olympics decided to outdo themselves with more bizarre decisions. At this point, one can say that this time around, the Olympics sneakily changed the theme of the event from sports to woke ideology. From disrespecting other nations, kicking out performers last minute, to uninhabitable living conditions. The Olympics have shown a disgraceful display and no one's buying their excuses. Fraser Price. So this time, the Olympics went above and beyond to bump the minorities off the winning charts. More recently, it was reported that eight-time Olympic medal winner was denied entry moments before the match was supposed to start. Officially, it was announced that Fraser Price had withdrawn from the competition out of her free will. But it was a little bit later that the fans got wind of the Olympics' real agenda. A video went viral on social media where Fraser Price was seen engaged in a heated discussion with stewards shortly before she was due to take to the track. According to The Telegraph, Fraser Price and world champions Shakari Richardson were initially prevented from entering the warm-up zone, a separate area adjacent to the athletics venue, in an argument that overshadowed their preparation. It was later reported that no immediate reason was given for Fraser Price's surprise absence. She can be heard saying, they've changed the rules. We've always come through this gate. She, security, said they changed the rule yesterday. How can they change the rule and then not say? So you're asking all the athletes who for whatever reason don't stay in the village, they can't come through the gate? That's crazy. Frazier was extremely heartbroken over the situation because later on, when she was granted entry, there was not enough time for the athlete to warm up for the race which forced her to withdraw from the competition. If that wasn't enough, her team later disclosed that Price had allegedly sustained an injury during a hasty warm-up that had immediate consequences on her running ability. It is mind-boggling that such unprofessional behavior was displayed by the Olympics Committee, but no one had been held responsible for such a tremendous loss. This loss is even more bitter as it was her last time competing in the game. I honestly feel I have not yet reached my peak. That's just how I feel. And I believe I can run faster. And mentally, it's almost like I'm obsessed with that goal. And I'm not going to let anybody, you know, make me feel bad for being obsessed about something that I've dreamt my whole life. While the Olympics management was allegedly making up stories for their own shortcomings, Price went to the internet to express her disappointment. She said, it is difficult for me to find the words to describe the depth of my disappointment. I know that my supporters share and shoulder this disappointment with me. I am truly blessed to have had the steadfast support of my fans since my Olympic debut in 2008. The support of my fans, my country, and the larger community has rooted me in immense gratitude that has sustained me throughout my career. With every step and win, you all have been there for me. My faith has always affirmed my trust in my journey. Thank you for continuing to be with me today and every day. Now, before you go on finding fault in Price staying outside the village, remember that the conditions there were appalling. So this time again, the Olympics were designed to house about 11,000 world-class athletes in the Olympic Village. However, the billions of dollars were used to cater to woke idealists rather than the athletes. The beds were made of cardboard, and the mattresses were uncomfortable. The conditions were so bad, that Italian swimmer Thomas Chekon, gold medalist in the men's 100-meter backstroke, was seen sleeping in a park outside. This incident occurred a few days after Chekon failed to qualify for the men's 200-meter backstroke. Chekon attributed his performance in the 200-meter backstroke qualifiers to his inability to rest. He said, It's hard to sleep both at night and in the afternoon. Here I really struggle between the heat and the noise. There is no air conditioning in the village. It's hot. The food is bad. Many athletes move for this reason. It's not an alibi or an excuse. It's the reality of what perhaps not everybody knows. 
The Olympic Village was not air-conditioned, and instead it relied on a water cooling system that much of Europe already uses, which would not have been a problem if the temperatures in Paris didn't surpass 90 degrees Fahrenheit during the games. This arrangement forced athletes from some countries including Canada, Italy, and Denmark to use portable air conditioning units, and if that wasn't bad enough, the food and water quality was not up to the mark as well. High-protein foods like eggs and grilled meat are in short supply and had been rationed, leading top swimmer Ariana Titmus to say that improper nutrition hurt her performance. Living in the Olympic Village makes it hard to perform. You don't expect this from an event that is supposed to be the best in the world. Athletes expect basics at the village, and things have been lacking. The queues are long, and it takes a very long time to get food. The thing is, fans were outraged after hearing the details from their athletic idols and started blasting the Olympics on social media. If you want your professional athletes to perform at a professional level, then they need the adequate sustenance to perform at that level, you know what I mean? They can't be lacking the eggs and the meat. According to the Olympics, the Paris Olympic Village was constructed to meet environmental excellence requirements, including maintaining a low carbon footprint in line with Paris's climate plan. These requirements led to decisions such as using cardboard beds and not providing air conditioning, which some athletes complained about. This has led to questions about the legitimacy of these decisions, especially considering the extravagant fashion in which the Olympics were opened, including paying drag queens for the performance. Some fans speculate that the management shifted its focus to a woke ideology, resulting in what they believe were the worst conditions athletes have had to endure. On the AC, We've tried to find a balance in the design and fit out the village between a long-term objective to create a sustainable neighborhood and a short-term responsibility to give high-performance athletes the best conditions to prepare. Solidio, the agency responsible for constructing the Olympic Village, claimed that they designed the athletes' residences to reduce heat without relying on air conditioning, using specific materials, insulating facades, and underfloor cooling. Together, they have been proven by a study to achieve a target temperature of 23 to 26 Celsius, or 73.4 to 78.8 Fahrenheit, at the hottest time of the day in a heat wave, a temperature that enables athletes to recover properly from competition. The 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris promise to be the most eco-friendly games ever, but experts say those sustainability commitments are just a bunch of greenwashing. Anyway, thanks to this greenwashing strategy, the living conditions worsened as 10 female athletes had to make do with just two restrooms. Not only that, the lack of privacy was another issue that weighed on the competitors. U.S. track and field athlete Sherry Hawkins highlighted the lack of privacy for changing clothes, with her room having no curtains. In my room at the Olympic Village, and these are the windows. So this is awesome. These are all of the people who are across from you. Yay, that's super fun. There are no curtains. Also, since the athletes and delegations moved into the village, at least five complaints for theft have been filed. On July 28, a rugby player from the Japanese team reported the theft of a wedding ring, a necklace, and cash totaling an estimated 3,000 euros. Argentina's football team was robbed. You see, Argentina's football team had a rough start even before their chaotic match against Morocco. Their training camp got robbed, with items including midfielder Thiago Almada's watch being stolen. Coach Javier Mascherano shared, We didn't want to say anything after training. I don't think it helps anything. But obviously, it's a bit disagreeable that these kinds of things happen. Adding to the disruption, several reports online claim Paris experienced major power outages amid the Olympic events. Social media was flooded with videos and pictures of the city in darkness, though these reports are yet to be confirmed. So maybe it was actually in Price's best interest to not stay in those abhorrent conditions. And following her footsteps, most of Team USA's women's tennis also got decamped to a hotel. Coco Goff, the tennis superstar, revealed on TikTok that she was the only American woman remaining in the official Olympic housing, and she and a teammate, Emma Navarro, confirmed the news to people later that day. Yeah, I stayed in there for three nights, I think, but I didn't sleep basically at all. I slept cumulatively six hours, so I had to move out and go to the hotel. I cried a little in the lobby the day I moved out, I think just from lack of sleep. It's no wonder that athletes could not perform their best in the competitions. Retired Olympic swimmer James Magnuson also took a swipe at the Olympics, shaming them for compromising the quality of the event. He said, A lot of complaints about this pool, and I might, must say most of those complaints are being aimed from our friends in America. 
they're not happy with the depth of the pool. They're saying there's too many cameras in the pool. It's causing waves for the swimmers. Fans have boldly called out Olympics for having their priorities elsewhere. So, $8.6 billion spent in preparation for the Olympics didn't include feeding and housing the athletes? I wonder how much of that budget went to feeding the double wide in the blue dress seated at the center of the table. I think somebody has their priorities a bit effed up. Another added, Wow, France has gone out of its way to make this the absolute worst Olympics. First, we had to see the opening ceremony. Absolutely gross. Then, let's make the athletes uncomfortable as possible. Imagine not being able to feed elite athletes but making vegan food the way to go. Honestly, then we're going to be green, so no air conditioning? It's summer. Oh, and don't get me started on the beds. I feel embarrassed for all the French people who unfortunately have been included. The incompetence of the management truly shined when Anna Barbosu was bumped from the podium by a simple human error. Although defeat and victory go hand in hand in such competitions, such irresponsible behavior caused great heartache to Anna. For those who don't know, American gymnast Jordan Childs initially finished her routine with a 13.666 score. But after an inquiry was launched, her score was bumped to a 13.766, putting her onto the podium with a bronze medal finished behind Brazilian Rebecca Andrade and United States teammate Simone Biles. Unfortunately, Barbosu had already started to celebrate her bronze medal before the last second score change. Sabrina Manika Voinia Jordan, my thoughts are with you. I know what you are feeling, because I've been through the same. But I know you'll come back stronger. I hope from deep of my heart that at the next Olympics, all three of us will share the same podium. This is my true dream. This situation would not have existed if the persons in charge had respected the regulation. We athletes are not to be blamed, and the hate directed to us is painful. I wanted to end this edition of the Olympic Games Paris 2024 in the spirit of Olympiism, the true value of the world. Well, although things did not work out for Anna, her country had her back all along. Marcel Cilicu, Romania's prime minister, claimed that the decision was totally unacceptable as he stirred up a diplomatic argument. I decided not to participate in the closing ceremony of the Paris Olympics after the scandalous situation in gymnastics, where our athletes were treated in an absolutely dishonorable way. To withdraw a medal earned by honest work based on an appeal, which neither the coaches nor the top technicians understand, is totally unacceptable. He even drew comparison with the Soviet Union's checkered past at the Olympics, as he suggested Team USA had unfairly used their influence as a sporting superpower to get the result overturned. I remember very well how in communism, the Russians would steal us at the Olympics, and we would try to argue with them without much chance of winning. It is inadmissible that in a competition of such magnitude, which promotes values such as respect, understanding, and excellence, a child who had honestly earned her medal should be brutally deprived of the result of her four years of work? I could not bear to see her in tears and accept calmly that such a thing is perfectly normal. Hundreds of millions of viewers worldwide were, like us Romanians, Effectively shocked by this terrible scene that shows that somewhere in the organization system of this competition, something is wrong. Male-female boxing scandal At least by the grace of some common sense, male and female gymnasts did not have to compete with each other. However, not every sport was that lucky. Italian boxer Angela Carini came to the Paris Olympics aiming for a medal to honor her late father and coach, who died shortly after she participated in the Tokyo Games three years ago. But Carini's performance in Paris lasted just 46 seconds before she abandoned her bout against Algerian opponent, biological man, Imani Khalif, with a spot of blood on her trunks. Now, this ain't some novice we're talking about. Carini competes in the 66 kilogram, which is 145.5 pounds, class, otherwise known known as welterweight, she won silver medals at both the World and European Championships in 2019. She was also a gold medalist at the European Youth Championships. She lost her opening fight in Tokyo. So it's pretty clear that Carini had adequate experience to judge that the odds were not in her favor. Carini exchanged a few brisk punches before abandoning her bout, which is an extremely rare occurrence in Olympic boxing. Carini didn't shake Khalif's hand after the referee formally raised it. She cried in the ring after sinking to her knees. Her actions sparked a discussion far beyond Paris about whether Khalif should have been allowed to compete after failing an unspecified gender eligibility test from the now-banned International Boxing Association. Italian Premier Giorgia Maloney discussed the issue with IOC President Thomas Bach, who has repeatedly defended Khalif's right to compete. 
Despite our request to have certainties and guarantees, both for the safety of our athlete and for the regularity of the competition, they've confirmed that Khalif was within these parameters. Afterward, Karini revealed that she had quit because of the pain from Khalif's opening punches, as she allegedly felt that her life was in danger. It could be the match of my life, but in that moment, I had to safeguard my life too. I felt to do this, I didn't have any fear. I don't have any fear of the ring or to get hit. I fought very often in the national team. I trained with my brother. I've always fought against men, but I felt too much pain today. I'm used to suffering. I've never taken a punch like that. It's impossible to continue. I'm nobody to say it's illegal. I got into the ring to fight, but I didn't feel like it anymore after the first minute. I started to feel a strong pain in my nose. I didn't give up, but a punch hurt too much, and so I said enough. I'm leaving with my head held high. The far left wants to allow biological males to beat the living crap out of women in boxing. Well, if you thought that was all the controversies the Olympics had this week, you were sorely mistaken. For context, Van de Velde, the volleyball player, pleaded guilty to three counts of R against a child for events that occurred in 2014. He reportedly flew from Amsterdam to London in 2014 to meet with a 12-year-old girl he met online, and then had S with her and advised her to get a morning after pill. Staff at a family planning clinic then alerted her family and the police, and that's how he was caught. In 2016, he was sentenced in England to four years in prison. He served one year in Britain before he was transferred to the Netherlands and released one month later. Turns out that had he been tried in his home country, he likely would not have been convicted of R, and instead, his actions would have been considered the lesser crime of Antukt. That is, S actions that violate social ethical norms. Van de Velde resumed his volleyball career after his release. He qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympics in his national pair with Emmers, which immediately sparked controversy around the world. It was later announced Van de Velde would not stay in the Olympic Village and he has not done any interviews. Fans believe that the whole Olympics organization has been sheltering a convict just to preach inclusivity. Unsurprisingly, the Dutch Volleyball Federation claimed that Van de Velde was proving to be an exemplary professional and human being and there has been no reason to doubt him since his return. Veld himself in the statement released by Nivobo said, I understand that in the run-up to the biggest sporting event in the world, this can attract the attention of international media. I cannot reverse it, so I will have to bear the consequences. It has been the biggest mistake of my life. However, his so-called mistake destroyed the childhood of an innocent child. The Survivors Trust expressed their displeasure on Van de Velde's remorse and said, the fact that Van de Velde is allowed to continue his career after admitting the biggest mistake of his life is further endorsement of the shocking toleration we have of child SA. The R of a child was planned, calculated, involving international travel, and will undoubtedly cause his victim lifelong trauma, irreversibly changing the course of her life. As a society, we have to start embracing a zero-tolerance approach to this heinous and costly crime. It definitely would be interesting to grill Veld on his actions at the time, but the Olympics are sheltering him on all platforms. That's all for today. We hope you liked that video, and if you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos just like this.